Rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine, this is part 21, and it's all about fitting the flywheel. Now, fitting the flywheel should be a very simple operation, but this one has a couple of problems. The main one is that the hole in the centre is tapered, so whoever bored this in the first place, the lathe must have been out of alignment or something, because it really is badly tapered. So when you put the flywheel on, it rattles about, even with the key. Originally, I struggled to get this flywheel off the engine, and I really think it was Loctited in place. When I remachined the outer edge of the flywheel, I Loctited it onto a mandrel, and it ran fairly true. But now, there's no Loctite in there, and we're just metal against metal, and it's quite wobbly. What I'm probably going to have to do with this is shim it onto the shaft, using some very thin shim steel that I have. The shaft is exactly three quarters of an inch in diameter, and the new crankshaft is very true indeed, with a dial test indicator in the lathe on the crankshaft there is negligible run out. On the engine at the moment the main bearings are not fully tightened so you can actually see the crankshaft moving slightly. This is not a problem, I will be tightening the main bearings up later on. Something puzzles me about this flywheel, it's very strange. Only last week I remachined the outer edge of the flywheel in the lathe, and it was nice and shiny and rust free and now it's got some rust on it this is very weird because i do not have a rust problem in my workshop if you look behind the engine you'll see that there's a radiator a large double radiator that keeps me warm in the winter and keeps the workshop dry even the chucks on the lathe do not get rusty where i handle them but this flywheel which hasn't been handled is going rusty when I was machining it, I did notice it was very patchy, so it must be a strange kind of cast iron. Maybe it's the stuff they built the Titanic from. So really, when it hit the iceberg, all the iceberg did was scrape off the paint, and then the seawater very quickly rusted the metal, the water came in, and the ship went to the bottom within two and a half hours. And I'm also noticing some rust around the edge of the front cylinder cover, which I also cleaned up recently. The rear cylinder cover is perfect because that is a new piece of cast iron, which is probably of a higher grade. This is a temporary fitting of the flywheel, just to allow me to turn over the engine at a good speed to see what it feels like, and it feels great. No tight spots and really free running. The flywheel is wobbling on the crankshaft because the original key is far too small, so I'm making a new one. This is the key in the embryo stages. It now needs to be cut to the right size. Flywheel keys can be made by cutting them from a piece of steel with a hacksaw and filing them up. I prefer to use the milling machine because it's more accurate. This is the first of the finishing cuts on the milling machine on this flywheel key. I originally cut the key from a larger piece of steel which was held horizontally in the milling machine and the milling cutter left a radius profile at the front of the key which needs to be removed. This part needs to be exactly at 90 degrees to the front face of the flywheel. In this clip, I've turned the part over in the milling machine to mill an angle on the outer part. As you can see, once it's cleaned up on the linisher, it looks like a keyway key. Now comes the interesting part, machining the base of the key to fit in the slot of the flywheel and the crankshaft. Periodically, I remove the key from the milling machine, generally after every cut. Clean off the burrs with a file, and try a dummy run in the slot in the crankshaft. I know this is a very unscientific, unengineering way of doing things, but it's the way I've always done it, and it seems to get me there in the end. When I first started off with model engineering many years ago, I would generally make three parts. The first one was really bad, the second one was not bad, and the third one was adequate. But these days I've got faster, so I put it down to the practice of the early days. With the key tapped into place with a soft hammer, you can see that the flywheel is not a tight fit. In the end, I had to use some shim steel around the flywheel, and now it fits quite well. I'll show this in some detail as part of the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.